to do a rant video, but it evolved into this, considering I don't want to talk about just the things I don't like about Black Ops 4, but a lot of the positives as well. Keep in mind this is my opinion and you are free to form your own based off your own experience with Black Ops 4 or this video. Alright, enough rambling, let's get down to brass tacks. Black Ops 4 is a fourth installment of a sub-brand in the Call of Duty franchise. Released in November 2018 to mild praise, it quickly fell apart after a few months, but we'll get to that soon. I didn't buy the game day one, so I didn't experience a lot of these myself. The game was prone to freezing, blue screens and zombies at higher rounds, including blackout. Treyarch finally fixed this, but the fact that something as game breaking as this was in the game from day one shows how rushed it was. It was released with a mediocre choice of weapons and maps, most of said maps being uninspired three lane arenas. Slums, Summit, Jungle, and Firing Range, the only memorable maps being direct ports from past Black Ops games. I bought the game shortly after Christmas in the midst of Operation Absolute Zero, in which they added two new weapons you could grind for and unlock with this game's take on the oh, Battle Pass, oh, yeah. popularized by Fortnite. Even having a 15 tier mini stream that unlocked the Cap 45, a returning fan favorite sidearm from Black oh, Ops 2. Oh, yeah. My love-hate relationship all started with Grand Heist. Being the second operation and releasing with the third and fourth Black Ops Pass maps, the $60 season pass, as I'm sure you're all familiar with, Grand Heist uh, reintroduced supply drops yeah. with reserves. One item cases that took about an hour to earn. Keep in mind these were already in the oh, game, yeah. as a reward for grinding out to the max tier of an operation. You could keep progressing, getting one case every tier until the operations end unlocking some cool cosmetics and stuff from past operations. After all the tomfoolery with this new system, in which it was revised several times over the course of two weeks, it got down to an acceptable level. The major selling point of reserves was the new skins for characters unlockable only through said reserves. At this point, it was all cosmetic only and nobody had that big of a deal with it. You could earn one item per hour after everything was said and done, or buy three items with 200 COD points, or the real world equivalent of $2 or $3 depending on where you live. I didn't play much during Operation Grand Heist, and the first split of Operation Spectre Rising. I'd like to talk about one of the main selling points of the game, Treyarch's take on the Battle Royale formula. 100 people drop from a plane or some other vehicle and duke it out for a dinner in a high stakes, medium paced, shooty shooty, looty looty simulator. And while Blackout is still plagued with bugs from day one, and had a lot of the same blue screen issues zombies had, this is where most of the work and polish went. It was understandable to me since the game shipped with half a thought out through tutorial and campaign for each of the specialists returning from Black Ops 3, and the new ones like Crash, Recon, and Torque, though Recon is a reskin of Outrider from Black Ops 3. I found myself playing it anyway, and was at least surprised at how much story left over from the scrap campaign that there was going so far as to tie in Blackout and multiplayer into the story. All in all, I enjoy playing Blackout. It's a solid battle royale and really fun with a squad full of friends. Zombies was kind of lackluster for me this year. I've been playing since Black Ops 1, been there through Black Ops 2, some of Black Ops 3. Don't get me wrong, the gladiatorial zombie simulator that was 9 is an amazing map, along with Blood of the Dead and Voyage of Despair because who doesn't want to explore the Titanic whilst fighting off an unending horde of the dead? But it's obvious that those were good maps in their own right, but the DLC maps Treyarch wants you to pay $60 for are clearly more polished and better. As of the time writing this, Treyarch has released three new maps, Dead of the Night, Ancient Evil, and Alpha Omega, the first two belonging to the Chaos storyline introduced with Black Ops 4, and Alpha Omega falling into the Aether storyline, Unfortunately, I don't have the pass, so I won't be talking about those maps. Here it is, folks, the moment you've all been waiting for. I'm going to talk about the horrible microtransaction system that plagues a triple-A $60 title. <laughs> Introduced with the second split of Operation Spectre Rising for the Days of Summer event were the S6 Stingray, the return of the Peacekeeper, Ballistic Knives, and the Locust. Guess how you could attain these amazing throwback weapons, or the new one? That's right folks, reserves. Meaning you could either be really lucky, really unlucky, or you could just buy them with your stacked gamer bills. The minute they added in some cases, best in class weapons, to the already inflated to high heaven loot pool, 
was the minute I couldn't care less about this game. Even though I still play a copious amount of it because it's like a drug to me at this point, I need help. Essex Stingray is the only one I'm going to go into any semblance of depth with because it's the most egregious. The Stingray fires a two round burst projectile that kills in three shots, meaning it's a two round, it's a two burst kill and you have to lead your shots in some scenarios. The Operator mod is where things get absolutely bonkers. The Operator mod turns the projectiles into explosive flechettes, making it a one burst kill in certain scenarios and a god tier weapon. Lock behind a lucky grind wall or a paywall, making the gun pay to win if you have the alt mod equipped. What was Treyarch thinking, man? They added popular weapons into a diluted loot pool that as of today, the last 10 days of Operation Apocalypse C, has 1,360 items in it. I got these numbers from popular YouTuber E. Coli Expresso. Shout out to his channel, his content is amazing, there will be a link down in the description. Now, granted, you could have a better chance at receiving these new weapons with a new type of reserve called a Weapon Bribe, earnable at tier 25 in the Days of Summer event, and the Ultra Weapon Bribe earned in the 4th of July of mini stream. These were basically reserve crates, and they gave you three items, but you were guaranteed a ranged weapon. But the difference between the Chad Ultra Bribe and the Virgin Bribe is that the Virgin Bribe has a loot pool that includes new weapons, yes, but also includes Mark II variants of guns you could already own. So I got the Spitfire Mark II out of my Weapon Bribe and the Ballistic Knives out of my Ultra Bribe. Lucky me. I was only, through the grace of Vondi himself, able to get both the Peacekeeper, Stingray, and the Argus from the first split of Apocalypse Z and a couple other weapons that I didn't bother grinding out tiers for and spectrizing in Grand Heist. All out of normal reserve cases grinding out contracts daily. I want to make this clear. Black Ops 4 isn't a bad game, by any means. But then again, take my opinion with however much salt you want, considering I enjoyed Infinite Warfare and Ghosts. It's a good game, plagued by an outdated season pass, the microtransaction system of a free-to-play game, and a toxic community full of torque campers, setting up with their barricades and razor wire. No hate towards the hundreds of passionate devs over at Treyarch trying to please us with the game that they've sweated and worked so hard for. We at least owe it to them for polishing this game in the first place. This is Cali Plays. Yes, this is my voice. Signing out. Thanks for watching.